Hello guys, today I wanted to share with you how to create a look inspired by Moonrise Kingdom, directed by Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson is known for his distinctive dreamlike aesthetic, and it's one of the reasons why he's one of my favorite movie directors, and I'm very excited about today's tutorial. This is our before and after. And also I would like to share with you that now you can donate to my YouTube channel if you like, as I've just created a platform with Buy Me A Coffee. I will leave you a link to it below this video. I would really appreciate your support as this could help me to have more time for creating videos for you guys. But without the further ado, let's go to the main part of the video. And this is our clip. I got it from Artgrid. I will leave you a link to that website below. I was actually struggling to find the right clip for today's video, as the film look in Moonrise Kingdom has been achieved through careful production design, but I hope I've managed to find a shot that can actually work quite well. It's been shot with ARRI in log format, so in order to convert it, we'll switch from non-color managed to color managed environment, as I've shown you in one of my previous videos, as this way we won't have to create any color space transform nodes. So let's go down here to settings then color managed, then we'll switch from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB color managed, then I'll uncheck automatic color management to be able to customize it a bit more, then I'll leave SDR color processing mode as I don't want to overcomplicate things for now, and my output color space will be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 as this is how my monitor is calibrated, but if you are working on the laptop you should leave here Rec 709A. Okay, and now you can see that the clip has been nicely converted and the software has recognized the input color space correctly, which is Arilog C, but sometimes Resolve fails in doing this and in this case you have to right click on your clip here, then go to input color space and then you'll have to choose the right color space from the list here, so it's very important to always know how the clip was shot. And now I will also show you how to work with a reference clips or stills, so let's go back to the edit tab and then I will go to my media pool as I've already exported here some stills from Moonrise Kingdom. Here they are. I've just found them online. And this one will be our reference for today, as it's quite similar to our clip. So first I will just drop it onto my timeline, then I'll go back to the color tab and let's place it in the viewer. And once your still is in the viewer, you can just right click on it and choose grab still. And by doing this, it will appear in the gallery up here. I've already grabbed a few other stills here as well. And then you can right click on your still in the gallery and choose play still. And then when we click on our main clip, and we have the wipe mode selected up here, we can see the clip and the reference side by side, and we can drag it around like this. But also I really want to show you how you can analyze colors in your reference still. I think that this option is only available for the studio version users, I'm not sure, but it's pretty cool. So we just have to go to the effects and find here a color palette and let's drop it onto the first node. And now we can see our nice color palette from the clip. We can see a lot of pastel colors, browns in the shadows, very earthy warm colors basically. Nothing very pure white. So I think it's a very helpful feature in Resolve. But let's go to our clip. And as I said, we'll try to match these two clips, but just a bit, as we have to remember that we are dealing here with a different camera, lighting, and the overall design of the shot, so they won't match perfectly. But what I want is to create a look inspired by Wes Anderson's film. Okay, so let's start and let's turn the reference clip on again, and I will be building my note tree as I go. So I will traditionally start from the exposure, and I will turn my waveform on and I will use my primary wheels to adjust it. I will try to keep the highlights down as much as it is possible as we can see on the reference the highlights are actually muted here so besides my lift gamma and gain wheel I will push the offset down a bit as well and I will basically play back and forth with my wheels until I'm satisfied with the result.
Okay, and this is before and after. Then let's not hesitate and let's start recreating the look. So I'll create another note and I'll call it look. And here we will try to add a lot of warm tones to the clip. So I'll use my gain wheel to match the sky a bit more and my gamma wheel to add the warmth in the mid tones. So again, I'm playing back and forth with the wheels to achieve a desired look. I also don't want to exaggerate. And this is before and after. I think we've managed to get rid of the blues and make it look more similar. Then I will be focusing on these separate parts of the clip, like grass and trees. And I will be trying to match these two with the reference. So I'll hit Option S again to create another serial note and then Option P to create a few parallel notes for these adjustments. I will move them up to make my note tree look a bit more tidy. And here I know I want to work on the grass separately, so I will label my note accordingly. Then on my next parallel note, we will be working on the trees. Then I will try to match the yellows from the backpack a bit more with the reference. And then at the end, we'll be adjusting the sky. But also I want to add a little bit of softness to the clip, so I'll try to use the glow effect. So let me create another serial note at the end then. And I'll call it glow. And I'll grab the glow effect from the effects. And here I will adjust the shine threshold. Something like this will work. And here we can also manipulate the spread as well to make it look softer. And here we can also add or reduce the saturation of the glow depending on the image. So I will leave it somewhere here. And this is before and after. So the glow also added a lot of warmth to the clip and made it a bit vintage looking. So now let's go back to our parallel notes and let's start from the grass. And also let me move the split screen here so I can see better. And I will go to my curves. Then I'll start from Hue versus Luma. And I want to take out a bit of the luminance from here. So I will qualify the color of the grass. And I will push this point down a bit. And now it looks more similar. Then I'll go to Hue versus Saturation and I will do the same. But this time I'll push the saturation up a bit to add more of it. Okay. And then I will also go to Hue versus Hue and I will change the Hue just a touch like this. Okay, looks good to me. And this is before and after. Now we'll be trying to match the green in the trees to make it look more rich in color as in the reference clip. So I'll turn off the split screen and I'll go to the power windows. Then I'll grab a rectangular mask and I will place it over the trees like this. Then let's go to the qualifier and let's qualify the right color. Then let's turn the highlight on to be able to see the selection and let's play it. Not bad, but I will use the sliders to improve the selection. Then I'll blur the selection and I will denoise it. This should work. And then I'll go to the primary wheels again and I will use the gain and lift sliders first to darken the trees. And then I'll push gamma towards green to make the color of the trees a bit richer. Okay, now looks more similar and this is before and after. Perfect. Let's move to the sky and here I will use the qualifier again and I'll improve the selection. Let's have a look. This should work. And let's use the gain slider pushing towards blue. Okay, looks similar. And now if we want to be stubborn, we can also try to match the yellow of the backpack with the reference. As I said, we are dealing with totally different clips, but let's try as well. So I will click on the right node. Then I'll go to the power windows. And first I would draw a mask around the backpack to isolate it from the rest of the shot. 
then I will obviously have to track it. And let's soften the mask here, just in case. And now let's maybe take the advantage of the color warper in Resolve. So let's just grab it and let's move it over the image towards yellow to adjust it. Okay, this works. But we can see that we also have here the luminance difference. So let's go to curves again. Then hue versus luminance. And let's drag it down a bit. Okay, and now let's see the final result full screen. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.